how many people who were condemning what I did would know for sure they would never do anything like what I did if they knew they wouldn't get caught. I think in the case of many people, it is fundamental virtue, and I applaud those people. But I think in many, many people, uh, it's either lack of opportunity or fear of getting caught. If it hadn't been for Bernie Madoff, the most famous white-collar criminal in America right now would probably be Mark Dreyer. Mr. Dreyer, anything you want to say to people who think you're getting... I'm going to prison for a very long time. I'm confident that the sentence will not be 145 years as the government requests. I was standing on a cliff, in a sense. My thinking was that it would be wonderful to borrow the money, but I didn't have the credit to borrow the money, so I would try to borrow money with somebody else's credit. Dreyer seemingly had it all. A 250-person law firm with his name alone on the door. The domino effect was that I had to keep borrowing new money to pay off old money. I felt this compulsion to appear to be doing extremely well. Obviously, it's easy to lose discipline when you're spending money that's not yours. The morality of it did bother me, but it didn't stop me. It's hard to explain that. I don't get any relief from talking about this. Each time I talk about it, it's a reminder of how much I've hurt my children and how foolish I was. Just to hear the words, it sounds like I'm talking about somebody else. They're going to go in and the judges are going to agree that I am absolutely the devil. This is not a case where widows and orphans lost their money. To stand before a court on the day of sentencing and say, hey, there are only 26 victims here. You're going down a bad road with this judge. How much do I hear for this paper shredder? If this paper shredder could talk. It's easy to say you would never cross the line, but the line is presented to very, very few people.